Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. Welcome aboard. That's Johnny Grant, the honorary mayor of Hollywood, welcoming us to the initial run of the brand new Los Angeles subway line that runs right under Hollywood Boulevard, right through the intersection of Hollywood and Vine. A lot of familiar faces are here, and we're going to be talking to quite a few people, many of whom seldom get interviewed including Fayard Nicholas, one of the two Nicholas brothers. Wearing tuxedos and other great costumes, they dazzled us with their incredible acrobatic dancing for decades. I asked Fayard how back into history in Hollywood their career goes. I think all together we made over 60 movies. We made movies all over the world. Uh-huh. And we enjoyed each one. Could, could you explain to me how much rehearsal you did so that you didn't hurt yourself? <laughs> well, we always wanted to, to get our routines as perfect as possible because we knew that it would show the same way all over the world when we made those movies. And we would um, just take our time rehearsing, maybe a couple of hours, because we, we had a, a good dance director, and he could dance too. His name was Nick Castle. And the three of us would get together and think of all these wild ideas. And there was a lot of things that uh, he asked us to do, and he couldn't do them. Like in that movie, Orchestra Wise, with Glendale and his orchestra, where he running up the wall, do a backflip into a split. He said, I know you can do it. And I say, Yo, are you crazy? I said, let, let me see you do it. He said, I can't do it, but I know you can. <laughs> well, you know, the other fun was watching you guys grow up. Oh, oh, those those little... You were just a little kid. Oh, yes. Uh, the, those Warner Brothers shorts that we did. Uh, the, the first one we did was in 1932. It was called Pie Pie Blackbird with you Blake and his orchestra. McKinney. That's when we were very young. <laughs> one, one final thing. What advice would you give to kids today? They seem to be drifting in the wrong direction, particularly boys who have a, a, an interest in dance. Maybe some of their friends think it's not, un, it's not popular, that kind of thing. What advice would you give them about pursuing that? Well, I, I tell you, the, the kids today, I, I would tell them, because I've, I've been to a lot of universities and colleges, and I do a lecture. And I tell them that, get their education. And uh, if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, entertainer, that you get your education, you'll be a better doctor, lawyer, or entertainer. And I tell them, don't do drugs. That's no percentage in that, because it's nowhere. My brother and I never do use drugs. And where we've been surrounded by it, because, because uh, there are a lot of show people who did these drugs, but we never did, never did. Because it, it would, would uh, mess up our dance. And, and uh, we've been lucky. We've well, I must tell you, I look at those films and, and I smile. You guys were just electric. <laughs> and in the lobby of one of the stations, preserved old Hollywood movie projectors. I was standing there looking at them and turned around and all of a sudden, there was comedian Red Buttons and longtime Paramount executive A.C. Lyles. I talked to Lyles first about how important the technical aspects of Hollywood were and are. I've been with Paramount 70 years, and I came in right after Wings in the 1928 when I was 10 years old. And in the theater at that time, being a projectionist was hazardous because we had fires. And now, of course, we have fireproof the film and everything like this, but these projectors were at Paramount all these years, and I look at them, and it brings back a lot of memories of all the pictures that these projectors, all the way back to Shane and pictures like this, and to, uh, when I came here at to Paramount, I never realized that we'd be here seeing this 
this this is historical day today. My God. I, I lived in D.C. for 20 years. We have a beautiful subway. I have never seen this before. I'm blown away. Isn't this nice? Yeah. Well, it's typical of Hollywood. It's typical the studios and everything that they do here the majestic but the people coming and are going to see this and this is really hollywood today but if you look at it, it could be hollywood 1930 1940 and picture like that and i'm here looking over at red buttons my good friend uh, who just said some nice things about me bless his heart and the other people who are here and they know that we're we'll look back because Red here is, is 80, I'm 80, and Red Buttons is here, and uh, Red, I was just telling them about you, and if I, listen, we're the same age, and if I looked as good as this rascal, I'd be delighted and happy. I just got signed for the Our Gang Comedy. Oh. <laughs> They're remaking everything, I see. <laughs> Now, listen, Red, Red could do it, too. It's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that they're honoring the projectionists because they're kind of the unsung heroes, particularly in the area when film was nothing, safe. Nothing can be done around here in this industry without the guys, you know, in back of the camera. My interview with Red Buttons and A.C. Lyles didn't last very long. They were starting the ceremonies to dedicate the subway, and the entertainment was Red Buttons. In my four years that I've been in show business. <laughs> I have I have opened bridges, museums, condominiums, supermarkets. I once opened a black market opening. <laughs> they wanted me to open the Third Avenue well in New York, but I wasn't born at the time. <laughs> This is my first time at a subway opening. And I say a subway should have an opening. Otherwise, you can't get down here and you can't get up there. It's needless, just took three, four months to write. I did some research, I looked it up. And I found out that some of the most famous people in the history of the world never rode a subway. <laughs> I have here a small list of some of these people who were never in a subway. And that's why I am proud. Lot, Lot who said when his wife was turned into a pillar of salt, salt I got. Popcorn, I mean. <laughs> Never rode a subway. Cain, who sleweth his brother Abel and searched all over the world for Johnny Cochran. <laughs> Never rode a subway. <laughs> yes, I am proud. St. Francis, whose own father called him a sissy, <laughs> never rode a subway. Jonah, who sat inside of the whale, you got cable? <laughs> never rode a subway, John, never. Moses, who said to the children of Israel, stop calling me Charlton. <laughs> never. <laughs> For this, I'm getting a lifetime pass. <laughs> I also want to thank the Metro people for naming this subway after me. <laughs> it, just, it should have been the red buttons line, but we can't have it all. It's <laughs> my opening music. So long, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Red. The impish, eternally funny red buttons at the opening of the Red Line in L.A. Before that, some thoughts from Fayard Nicholas and A.C. Lyles on this week's American Montage. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.